will enable us to achieve that, and I commend this bill to the House. I call Chris Bishop. Thank you very much, Mr Speaker. Look, um, I know why this bill has come about, and no one denies that it is, it is well-intentioned, because no one in the Parliament wants there to be miscarriages of justice. No one in the New Zealand Parliament wants people to be wrongly convicted uh, of crimes. No, Lawrence Hill does not want that. Don't be silly. Don't be, don't be silly, Mr McAnulty. Where this bill came about was because of a spate of cases over the last 10 years, the Bain case, the Tanapora case, uh, the ongoing saga to do with Peter Ellis down in Christchurch. And the Labor Party decided, for reasons best known to themselves, that one solution to um, the problems of uh, alleged miscarriages of justice, and I'll come back to that, was the Criminal Cases Review Commission. And um, Jacinda Ardern, the now Prime Minister, I was on the Justice Committee with her, along with Jackie Dean and others in the last Parliament. She was very keen on this idea. And, and a lot like uh, when the Prime Minister makes policy, she sees a, something that sounds quite good and she um, doesn't do the real homework on it and doesn't do the reading on it. Um, oh, we'll have a review commission. Oh, that sounds great. Well, the United Kingdom's got one. So we'll, if, if, the, if it's good enough for the United Kingdom, uh, it's good enough for New Zealand. And now poor old Andrew Little, the Minister of Justice, has been handed the hospital pass of trying to make this into reality and trying to grapple with actually some pretty complex uh, underlying criminal law issues to put this into place. And I will come to some of the issues that are not dealt with uh, during uh, in the bill so far. So I acknowledge completely the intention that's uh, a sound one, it's a good one. But the first and most important point I want to make, and it deals with the member who's scarpering out, which is um, Priyanka, is they have not, Priyanka Radhakrishnan, the government has not made the case, in my view, for how the current system does not work. Let's look at the examples that uh, Ms Radhakrishnan talked about. She said, oh, there's lots of notable examples in the recent past of miscarriages of justice. OK, the David Bain case. David Bain was convicted in 1994 for murder of his family. He went to prison. He eventually went through the uh, legal process and went all the way up to the Judicial Committee of the Privy Council, which ordered a retrial, and which quashed his convictions uh, and ordered a retrial in, the, uh, in 2009, largely on the basis of the um, new evidence that Joe Karen was able to adduce around the luminol uh, footprints. OK, fair enough. The new trial was held, um, I think, a couple of years or so later. David Bain was not convicted of those crimes. He is a free man. Well, why do we need a Criminal Cases Review Commission? What would a Criminal Cases Review Commission have done for David Bain? David Bain appealed with fresh evidence. He went up to the Judicial Committee. They quashed his conviction. He was retried. He was not found not guilty. And he's a free man. Why do we need a Criminal Cases Review Commission? What about the other example, Tana Pora? Same thing happened. Tana Pora's convictions were quashed by the Judicial Committee of the Privy Council, largely on the basis of new evidence, new scientific evidence around fetal alcohol syndrome disorder and whether or not uh, he actually uh, was guilty of the murder of Susan Burdett. Again, why do we need a Criminal Cases Review Commission? His conviction was quashed by the Judicial Committee of the Privy Council. Mark Lundy. Mark Lundy uh, went through the various processes. Mark Lundy appealed to the Judicial Committee of the Privy Council on the grounds that he couldn't possibly have committed the murder uh, of Susan, uh, of uh, his wife and his daughter at that time. That he, that he, that, uh, and there was evidence around the McDonald's uh, that they'd consumed the night before, and there's the, uh, you know, was he able to get back to the um, uh, Foreshore um, Motor Lodge in Batoni, which incidentally is about 45 metres from my house, as it happens, but uh, and whether or not he could go back there in there enough time and make it back to Palmerston North. Uh, and, uh, and of course, there's that evidence around the, the uh, human tissue that was found on, I think it was a t shirt, found in his, in his car. And there's new evidence adduced by Mr. Lundy and his lawyers uh, at the Privy Council around the testing technique that the police used back in, in 2000 in Palmerston North, uh, and his conviction was quashed. And then he was retried, and actually he was found guilty. Uh, actually, the police completely changed their theory of the case, or the Crown changed its theory of the case, uh, and it turned out they made a much more obviously convincing case for him being uh, the guilty suspect. So again, 
why do we need a Criminal Cases Review Commission? And uh, a Labor member over there said before, well, it took a long time. Well, look, actually, these things do take a long time. And I'm telling you now, once this Criminal Cases Review Commission is established, uh, it will take a long time for people who think they, are, think they can make use of its resources to go through the process. And that's without even talking about all of the unknown uh, elements of the system. For example, will the system be amenable to judicial review? Now, I'm telling you now, if there's judicial review available for what, is, what it should be uh, a public body uh, applying public law principles, that is going to literally insert another whole massive layer of appeals inside an appeal system uh, as it is. Okay? And if you think Kim .com, the Kim.com saga was bad, with multiple different chains of litigation and multiple chains of appeal around essentially what's a pretty simple case, should he be extradited or not, and what is it, seven, eight years later, we're no closer to that decision actually going to the Minister for a decision. If you think that's bad, because it's largely judicial review and appeals that have caused that, then you have not seen anything yet when it comes to the Criminal Cases Review Commission or the proposed one. So I just simply ask the House and ask the government all of the cases they have made reference to uh, and have adverted to in their speeches have been dealt with through the traditional criminal process. Second point, what is superior about the Criminal Cases Review Commission compared to the royal prerogative of mercy. And it's not clear to me how it will be superior, because Raymond Ho, who's the chair of the Justice Committee, just spent a, quite a degree of time in his speech talking about how it largely replicates the elements of the royal prerogative of mercy, and it seeks to basically enshrine that into a formal statutory process. So what is superior about this process? The system we have now, I believe, sir, works well. I believe it is effective, and I believe I pointed to examples of the criminal justice system working effectively uh, to remedy wrongs committed during the system. And I don't think, and I've listened to all the government speeches, and beyond, you know, sort of pious words around we've got to make justice work for everyone and, you know, stuff like that, which no one disagrees with, beyond kind of motherhood and apple pie sanctimony, which we're used to from the Labor Party, they have not made a credible case for the Criminal Cases Review Commission. And I go, I repeat to what I said at the start of my speech, it largely reflects the, uh, the work that was not done by Jacinda Ardern, the Prime Minister, who was the then Justice spokesperson in opposition. We had a spate of these cases going through the courts, very, very high profile cases, Bain, Pora, the ongoing uh, drama to do with Peter Ellis. And like a lot of Labor Party policy, it sounded like a good idea. We'll chuck it in the manifesto, we'll see what happens, we'll probably never have to implement it. Well, now we do. And I'm sorry, the bill that they has present, been presented to the House so far is a shocker. Let's talk about the actual issues to do with the bill, which have been canvassed already. One third of the people on the Commission have to be lawyers. One third. One third. This is, an, this is an essentially an appellate body, right? This is a body that is going to weigh up evidence, and if it believes that it's in the interest of justice, because that's the test, if it's in the interest of justice, it can, it can then refer those cases back to the appeal court. One third have to be lawyers. Seriously, one third? I mean, seriously, only a third? We're going to get people, I mean, no doubt there'll be, excuse me, smart people on it, but one third? This is a body that is going to deal with the most finely grained issues of criminal procedure. That's the reason why the, the, there's a Criminal Cases Review Commission in the first place. That's the reason why the cases are going to end up there, because the admissibility of evidence is really complicated. That was, that was true in Bain, it was true in Lundy, uh, it was true in Tainapora as well. These are really tricky issues. And the government wants to put on the Criminal Cases Review Commission two-thirds non-lawyers. It's an absolute shocker. What about the rules about how this is all going to operate? It's not, a, not subject to the Official Information Act. That's bizarre. What about the rules of contempt of court? Does that apply? We've got no idea. What about the rules about the privilege against self-incrimination? We have no idea. 
The rules of evidence, will they be applicable in the, in the appellate body and will they then be applicable again in the court that it gets referred to? We have no idea. The government has not made the case. This is a oh, shocker. Order the member's time has expired. <laughs> I call Dr Duncan Webb. Thank you, uh, Mr.